Pater Pascal has become a, a major success and also as you as you write in your in your article that has been now republished uh, uh, within the 25th anniversary of the IEEE uh, software magazine uh, where I, I, I take something out here you write in here after uh, this has been made away labeled and within Duo, Pascal and so on uh, you write something about suddenly there was a mass market computing went mainstream so what was your feeling there? Have you been proud of uh, your work as you have quoted it uh, or concluded in this article, uh, A Brief History of Software Engineering, where you, where you basically say uh, at the end, it must be a pleasure to work with languages because they enable us to create artifacts that can show and be proud of. Yeah, I... Shall I say? <laughs> of course, it's a, it's it's a pleasure if you ultimately realize you have created something that is used worldwide and has uh, helped a lot of people not only do their current job but how to comprehend this whole field of programming and computing. Um, the fact was that I published Algol, implemented Algol back in 1970, but it became widely known and used only through the advent of the personal computers. The Apple II... Algol or Pascal? You mean... Sorry. You said, you said, you said Algol. No, I meant Pascal. 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 I'm terribly yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, there, there was a delay of some eight years, seven, eight years. And uh, then it really took off because through these personal computers, computing came into the houses and into the schools to people who had not known, usually I'm saying not been corrupted, with Fortran and PL1 and COBOL. So they, uh, they could learn Pascal with the right basic conceptions. But as far as I remember, when I came to in, seven, in 1977 to, to Zurich, then there was a big world map on the wall with small flags where Pascal is used, with, uh, which countries, which universities, and it was already quite full of flags. This and that was still mainframe this uh, is, time. This is mainframe time, and we, we had many Pascal clients but mostly, I would say, 80% from universities. Universities, yes. yeah. yeah but and that was spread because our Pascal P compiler yeah. and the yeah. portable system. Which but is, again, a good example for a concept, yeah. which is still uh, absolutely broadly used because the Pascal P compiler had, uh, had a stack machine on the background, which is very similar to the Java virtual machine, only much simpler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, also my first language was was Pascal. Uh -huh. Well, yes, it yes. was it, it was already two Pascal. Yes. Are you so, so. old? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, when you have presented this the first time, Pascal to the to the scientific community, what was your feeling? Because young young uh, researchers they go for the first time to a conference and present their idea are usually kind of nervous, and after the presentation of their the idea is the first time, even if it's something like 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 Pascal or uh, I don't know something something comparable. What was well, your feeling? Well, I, I certainly had no idea that Pascal would ever become so widely known and used. Uh, that would have been presumptuous at that time to assume so. On the other hand, I I, I was sure that there were some good ideas in it. Uh, good ideas, not all of them just coming out of my head, but putting them together into a coherent language, formulating them so it can be used. And uh, no, I, I, certainly you are always a little bit uh, uh, nervous when you go for a talk, particularly if it's many hundred people. But uh, if I remember at all, it went okay. Many questions or? 
There were quite a few questions, yes, that's true, yes, yes. I think at that time, actually, the debate was much more alive. I, I remember even on, yeah. on huge scandals, but in, in a positive sense. So Dijkstra, for example, oh, yeah, 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 attacked yeah. people in journals uh, mm -hmm. in a very uh, decisive, uh, decisive. So decisive way. Yeah. So almost, I would say, in a crude way, but of course, on a, on a, only criticizing uh, on the, uh, what they were writing, and they were answering also in a very, wow. very decisive way. And it was a great discussion. And uh, young people like me uh, were following uh, that, and we were enchanted that they are discussing on such a high level. Yes, and and yes. we liked it very much mm -hmm. because this was a real school, not only of, of science and of democracy at the same time. And if I may add, say something, I. I, I had a similar experience here in 2003 at, this, at the Europe RGMSD conference after the keynote talk of Tony Hoare, which, which was very interesting. And in some parts, maybe he promised a little bit more that was obvious for some uh, participants uh, uh, from the audience that, that it is really uh, doable. And then Lee Klaus and others started a discussion which was so exciting because on the one side it was absolutely polite and respectful against the person, but without any respect uh, a, a attacking the content. And, and Tony Hoare also was discussing on, on the very same excellent level. And I remember that we were already over time and Christian Langer, who was the, the head of the whole uh, uh, conference, uh, told me quite, uh, Whispered. Whispered. whispered that, that do not stop the discussion, do not stop the discussion. Well, it's true. Uh, the, the, the discussions were sometimes rather fierce, but polite. And it's just a matter of being able to distinguish the person and the idea he's uttering. They're two different things. And very often people don't make this distinction and they, they, they hurt somebody and that's, that's not a good idea. But it's true what you say, I'm glad you say it. There were fierce discussions going on about things which are actually conceptually important but now forgotten. Think of the parameter debates, value, reference, name parameters in alcohol. <laughs> Nowadays we, we think of them as shop talk under experts, you know. But but there was really something behind it, fundamental issue which ought to be resolved. And then of course in this uh, language committee of the working group of IFIP, uh, it was very fierce in the beginning at least. I mean, some people became really uh, physically violent, really? shaking each other. Yeah, I won't, <laughs> I won't mention names now. After that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Looking, looking back, what, what impact do you see that, that Pascal made and uh, what would you have done differently if you would start over again? Yeah, I mean, when one does something, one is always a child of that time, on that uh, environment, those possibilities. Um, nah. Probably I would have been a little bit less uh, listening to pure efficiency arguments, being a little bit more brave. For instance, I had the first version of Pascal presented at the NATO conference in Rome, I think it was 1966, uh, which excluded recursion. And there was, of course, influenced by the CDC computer which was our home machine at ETH. I did not want just to design a language, but an implementation that somebody could use. So as an engineer, I had to bow a little bit to what was well possible. But then, of course, uh, this CDC machine was just not suitable for recursive procedures. And, and later on, we we put recursion back and, and had other machines. So that there I perhaps uh, 
bowed a little bit too much to the local mm. circumstances. This is just one, one example. Uh, there were not too many others. There's nothing that I would have done fundamentally different. Thank you.